What's up guys, my name is Danger on PC. This is going to be a little bit of a video of how to make a automatic door by a button. So, let's get started. So at first you're going to need a sort of platform like this. I've just got five 2x2 two two, uh, general metal plates. Um, then you're going to need to go to no collide. And no collide the centre one with the one to the right of it. There. So they will not collide with each other now. Now we need to go to wire, scroll down to physics, and get hydraulics. Now I normally set the width to about two-ish for this. Make sure that both of these are un uh, unticked. Have whatever model you want. Then we come here on the center plate. Attach one side. On this plate here attach the other side and then we're just going to put the controller here. doesn't really matter where you put the controller but it's just easier for later on if it's there. Now we need to go to tools, we need to go to sliders, uh, set the width to 1. Now you want to put a slider here to here in the top right hand corners and from the bottom right hand corners to the bottom right hand corner here. That will just help it, help it slide. Um, across that axis into the other one. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a button. Again, you can have whatever uh, model you like. I'm going to choose the red button. Now you want this on toggle um, just to, uh, just for uh, well that's how the door works, doesn't it? So you know. Then you want the value on of 1 and value off of 0. Now if you just spawn it wherever you want, I'm just going to Put it there. Now let's get down to a bit of the coding. Now we're going to go into the Q menu. We're going to go to Chip Expression 2. And we're going to create a new expression. So you can click and delete all the um, crap that comes up. Delete Persistent and Trigger because we're not going to need them. You can set the name to something like Door Operator. Inputs. Now let's think. Let's just save it. What's the input going to be? We're going to wait for our user to click the button. So our input is going to be button. And now we're going to want the door to slide this way. So we're going to want the hydraulic to contracting length. So we're going to want to change the length. So we're going to have length of the output. Right. So now what we're going to want to do here. We're going to want to check if our user has pressed the button. So if button is directly equal to 1 then we are going to want to change our length to 10 so we're going to want to contract it to a small length you can put this to 5 if you want you can put it to whatever you want then so what happens now if our button hasn't been pressed. Well, what length is that going to be? You're going to need to specify this as well. So we can write another if statement. If button is directly equal to zero, then our length is going to equal 95. Now, this is here. This is bad code. What you can do otherwise is write an else statement here and that will mean that if this is untrue then do this so it will always stay like that right now if we check it should be validation successful now let's spawn the chip in now we're going to want to go to wire advanced now our inputs are going to be our button and go to, over to our wire controller uh, we're going to want to change the length, and that's going to go to the output length. Now, I made the mistake in practice of this, of not unfreezing the uh, prop in the middle. So make sure that you do unfreeze the prop in the middle. Now if you click the button, it should slide across quite nicely, and slide back across quite nicely as well. You can change the variables if you want. So... You can change the expression to, say, 100 there, 
and one there if you wanted and then just update the chip so you see it moves the location it's just to your own preference so anyway guys thank you for watching this tutorial um make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one